being a single parent or being divorced, things are taken out of our hands and we feel the stress of that because we don't feel like we can control it. And we want to have some control back over what's happening in our lives. Welcome to this week's episode. Our guest is the beautiful Sarah Dawkins. She is an esteemed author. She is a keynote speaker and she is also a holistic health coach and was an award-winning registered nurse. Welcome to It Gets Better From Here podcast, Sarah. How are you today? Hey, Cheryl. I'm great, thank you. And thank you for having me on. It's my pleasure. And thank you so much for making time because I know you're really busy. I wanted to have you on because your insights and your wisdom and your journey is so profound and it really is going to help a lot of our our guests I mean our guests I'm sorry our and maybe guests who are listening former guests but our you know community of divorced women and single moms so can you please just you know share with us your journey how you got to where you're at today sure so I always wanted to be a nurse because my mom was a nurse I was raised in the medical model I wanted to help people in their vulnerable times and I thought nursing was such a great way to do that so I went into nursing qualified in 2001 I'm like great I'm gonna be a nurse forever until I retire or die you know that long Um, because I just thought that's really what I wanted to do and literally in 2005, so I'd only qualified four years, somebody questioned my use of pharmaceuticals at home. So wondering why a nurse would question me using pharmaceuticals, because that's what we use in the hospital. I went on this journey, I went down this rabbit hole of research and research and research, which opened so many doors, it opened my eyes, literally. It exploded my mind, really, because you know, when you've lived 41 years in this frame of mind and then suddenly somebody comes and sticks a pin in it bursts it wide open Um, and I started to see that our bodies could heal themselves so I went on my own healing journey and healed eczema psoriasis candida acid reflux um, chronic pain joint pains burned out my adrenal glands I had an underactive thyroid and I ended up with depression and suicidal thoughts and I healed all of that over a period of time I thought, actually, nursing is no longer fulfilling me. It's not nourishing my soul. I don't feel like I'm helping people now. I'm just helping them to not have symptoms. I'm not helping them to heal. Now I know what healing is. And um, so I, I trained as a coach and left nursing. And now I'm able to help people to help themselves. Because, you know, even though I consider myself as a healer because I've healed all these conditions, I don't heal anybody, they heal themselves. I help them to see that they can support their bodies and heal themselves like I have done, like like people all over the world have done. That's really beautiful. And I agree with you wholeheartedly when you say that you don't heal people because we are not, nor are we responsible for healing people, but we act as guides, as mentors to say, hey, I've you know, gone through this, I've, you know, figured out a way to change my life, shift my life and move forward. And I can show you the way if you want to follow me or, you know, if you want to allow me to help guide you, but here's the solution. So I love that. It's so beautiful. One question that I actually did not get to ask you last time when we went on um, Instagram live, what were those pharmaceuticals that, you know, you were um, being questioned? Okay, <laughs> there we could keep it as pharmaceuticals. No, it was um, vaccinations, and I was taking my puppy to the vet for its puppy shots. And so she was questioning me, and she said, "Do you know what's in the vaccination?" And I'm like, "Well, no, you know." And I'd, I'd given vaccinations in in my job as a nurse previously, but I didn't know what was in it, and I thought I need to look into this what I'm doing, if I'm giving this, I need to be fully aware, because we weren't taught any of that in nursing school. And um, I am wary of saying this because it could trigger a lot of people. Um, and it's helped other people to become more aware, like it did me, it totally 
opened my eyes to what I was doing. Um, so yes, that was that was my initiation, and um, and I was really quite shocked with what I found out actually. Thank you for sharing that, Sarah. And I apologize if it caught you off guard, but I understand that, you know, out of respect for all the listeners, but, you know, truly what's really important for me is at least just raising the question and the awareness that you have to take responsibility in especially what's going in your body. Like you have to have you have to take a curious approach before my my son when he was going through cancer and um chemo i would experiment on the chemotherapy when it, if it was you know ingested so he had some that went right through his portacath directly and there were some where it was in like powder form and i had to mix it with his oatmeal i i tasted that myself and it was horrible. So I did whatever I needed to do to mask it. And, you know, chemo was the right option for us at that at that time. But there are so many different types of holistic approaches, what I love. And that's also why I went down that rabbit hole of figuring out what I needed to do, what I could do to help him to help complement through nutrition, through practices, what are some of the things that you discovered along the way that helped you heal from all sorts of, you know, ailments? Well, when I first started my journey, like like I see many people now, I only concentrated on the physical plane. So, you know, nourishment, nutrition, hydration, sleep exercise, breathing. And that, that was my first area of concentrating and working on, on nourishing my body, getting enough sleep. And and the funny thing is I only used to drink water on a Wednesday when I went to the gym with a friend and I wouldn't drink water at any other time. So, you know, it was just being aware of, of what I was doing to my body. But it was as I went through my own healing and, um, and wrote my book, Heal Yourself, and other people started writing their healing journey, I'm starting to look at it through different eyes. And I saw that there was a need for uh, mental healing, you know, working with our mind, things like mindfulness and gratitude, but also to nourish our mind, to feed it. So like I'm here in Spain, I'm learning Spanish. Other people like crosswords, some people like art or cre being creative. We need to, to do something to nourish our minds. I also found I, I needed to reconnect with that little voice inside of me, whatever name people want to give it, um, but that, that spiritual connection needed to be made. But the last piece of the jigsaw for me was the emotional side of it, the emotional healing, and I didn't even realize I needed to do that until I did my training as a coach. And the lady was quite spiritual and took us on a meditation journey into our own body, body wisdom. And that really, really was the last piece of the jigsaw. You know, it's like you, we have to heal our past. We can't change what's happened. What's happened has happened. But we can change the way we look at it. So it's about understanding what happened. And if we can, just allowing ourselves to stop carrying that weight with us, to be able to let it go and, and even forgive the people involved if we can, because we're all a product of our life's experiences. And as they say, hurt people hurt people. So it's about understanding that, you know, the people that hurt us might themselves have been hurt in the same way, or they didn't have the skills and knowledge to know any better at that time. And, and maybe they, they're a parent figure that said something to us to try and help us to move on with our lives, but actually their words landed really wrongly and we held on to that deeply. So that emotional healing is about understanding the past and, and reframing it through compassion and kindness for everybody involved. And that is where a lot of us miss out and it's where I missed out for sure, um, because I didn't know, um, but once I knew, and was able to do that inner healing work and allow that forgiveness to flow through, I could offload that weight and stop carrying that hurt around with me because it's heavy. And we took it down and it, we carry it around, but it spills out it, through our emotions and we don't even know. 
That's so important. I love how you touched on that, especially because of, you know, our community, my community of divorced women and single moms, where they've been hurt. Let's say it was their fault carrying that shame or guilt. And if they're a single parent, single mom navigating and helping their kids, they're, they have an opportunity to not be the statistic of having a broken home. I don't believe in that. No. But like you said, Sarah, it's so key. I'm glad that this came up is that it's so important to do the work to heal and that you cannot change the past, but you can look at it from a different perspective. That's really beautiful. And I'm so grateful that, you know, it came up and you shared that because that's the kind of messages that we need here on this platform. And just question about like prioritizing self-care and holistic health practices, especially during such a difficult time as transitioning from, you know, a marriage into a divorce and then also mixing it with the parenting. Can you tell us some tips that we can give our listeners, our viewers, like a, a well-rounded approach, if you have some for them yeah, to, sure, you know. Sure. I think I think the first and foremost is you need to identify your stressors because we, we take on board all this stress, but actually when we start identifying it, most of it is out of our control, but yet we let it control us and allow it to stress us. We can only control ourselves. We cannot control anybody else or anything else. So identify what's causing you stress and, and look underneath that. Why is that causing me stress? And chances are it's because we're trying to control everything. Because, you know, being a single parent or being divorced, things are taken out of our hands and we feel the stress of that because we don't feel like we can control it and we want to have some control back over what's happening in our lives so identify your, your stresses but identify what you can control and what you can't control and and we need to find a way to come to terms with what we can't control and understand that we can make waves to move things in certain ways but we have no control over the majority of things. We can only control ourselves. Um, and I've been that single parent and I understand from that perspective. And it's like you, you kind of want your old life back because some bits of it felt nice um, and you've got a supportive partner. But when you're a single parent, everything lands with you. So understand what you can and what you can't control and find a way to allow everything you can't control to just flow, but be okay with it. But that said, set some healthy boundaries as well because it's okay to say no to people to protect yourself because when we say yes and we don't want to and we can kind of do that to please people because of the situations we can find ourselves in, when we say yes to somebody else and we don't really want to say yes, what we're doing is we're saying no to ourselves. And that really is not self-care, that's, that's people pleasing. So set those healthy boundaries. Practice some relaxation techniques, whether that's meditation or going for a walk or doing something crafty or baking or, or whatever helps you to relax and feel sort of in the flow where you lose time because you're so engrossed. But, you know, if you've got children, bring them into it. Teach them those relaxation techniques. Take them out. Let them move their bodies. Um, make it that joint effort. Don't think it's about self-care for me. It's about self-care for me and my children or my immediate family. What can we do together? And that also allows for bonding as well. It improves that bonding. I love that because that's a good point you made, that self-care does not yes, the word self is in it, but there are different types of self-care where you can bring your kids into the mix. And my gosh, that just feels really, really good. And so yeah. for 
I mean, it does just, you know, me being a single mom and just some of the things that for me, self-care is doing something fun. Like some, that's one of the things that I like for self-care, you know, going out, riding my bike, going hiking. I love my kids when they join me. So that is a form of self-care. And I'm so happy that you brought that up because some people just feel like self-care is going to the spa, doing a home bubble bath. You know, it doesn't have to be by yourself. You can bring them in. That's beautiful. Yeah. What about the, the... Can I just add in there? Yes, Sorry, just to be kind to yourself as well, because it's so easy to take the shame and guilt on board and the responsibility for everything and be burdened. But just be kind to yourself and take care of your own basic needs. You know, look after yourself. Um, you need to eat. You need to hydrate. You need to sleep. You need to have a sense of community. Just make sure that you tend to yourself, but be compassionate. That we need to hear more of that, Sarah. Me especially, I did have all of the, you know, I had all the chatter. And what is important for everyone to know is that, like, give that chatter, the, the voice in your head is not even your voice. It no. could be, who knows, someone like a teacher said something to you that, told you you were not good enough or whatever the words were, or it could be your your dad or your sister or your brother, and it's not even coming from you. So that's really, really an important thing that you pointed out, and I really appreciate that. And, and speaking of self-care, coming from a culture where I really had to learn on my own that it's not selfish because my my culture, I'm Filipino, it is really about everyone else except for you. And if you even took the time to do self-care, let's say it's not with your children, that's frowned upon because that's what they've done and that's what they know. What what tips can you give perhaps like a mental shift for those that are struggling to, you know, take the time for themselves, the single moms especially, take the time for themselves at this moment? just know that it's not selfish it is necessary it is a part of self-care it's and it's you need it for your own mental health as well if you feel pushed to be part of the community all the time doing for others all the time you get no time for yourself and you're depriving yourself and you're depriving your children of that that self-care that family time that even just me time, you can sit and meditate with the children. You know, it could be like a five minute meditation, doesn't need to be half an hour or an hour, but that's such quality time. And that helps you to calm your brain, calm your nervous system, just some deep breathing and becoming aware of that moment, who you are, where you are, what can I see, feel, hear, touch, that really grounds you in that moment and calms your nervous system and your brain. And if you can do more of that, even like five minutes, but like maybe three or four times through the day, just snatch five minutes or even a minute to ground yourself. It really soothes your nervous system and it's so necessary for your own mental health. And one minute, everyone can do one minute. Do you have yes. um, a, a tool for something quick that they could do that we can even have our, you know, I'm, I know we're on video and also audio. So is there something that you can share with us in that way that yes. they can take? Just use your breath. Close your eyes if you if you need to or keep them open. Just stop what you're doing, if, if safe to do so, obviously. <laughs> you're in a place to just take that one minute for yourself. Uh, if possible, close your eyes because that really calms your nervous system down and um, and really helps quickly. And breathe, but be conscious of your breathing. Feel the air moving through your nose, over your throat, into your lungs. Feel your chest expand. Feel your chest contract as you breathe out and feel the air coming back up and over your throat and through or through your nose or through your mouth. And really be conscious of your breathing. Just literally breathe in and out count if you need to if that um, distracts your mind a bit more or, or concentrates your mind a bit more even but follow your breath just come back into yourself and your breath and and you can go one step further and, say, and you know what am i feeling and where am i feeling it 
and identify an emotion or a feeling and a place and just imagine breathing relaxation in or white light and and flooding those areas wherever the discomfort is or the pain or the anxiety and just breathe that peace and calm and tranquility but as you close your eyes and and breathe deeply both together really soothe your nervous system and help calm your mind down as well at the same time and like you say you can do it in one minute several one minutes throughout the day we can all find a minute at some point in the day just to do that and the more you do it the calmer your mind will start to become I love, love that. And I was doing some deep breathing as you were, <laughs> as you were saying that as it's a great reminder. And you know, what's interesting. It's interesting that not everybody knows how to do deep breathing. So if you're somebody that um, is trying this right now, and you notice that you really can't take a deep breath, doesn't that say something that you have not given yourself permission to slow down enough to even take a deep breath? not like a labored breath, you know, you're just regular breathing, like a deep breath from your diaphragm, like Sarah was saying. So that's your sign. This is your sign to please start practicing that because guess what, guys, if you don't have your breath, that means you're dead. So, you know, please really take one minute, one minute out of your day. Thank you, Sarah. And so for you know, to some, it might seem overwhelming for where they're at right now. They're in transition to focus on their health and their well-being because they got to pay bills. They have to do the parenting plan. They're, you know, their ex is X, Y, and Z, and they don't know what to do. What message do you have for those that are feeling really overwhelmed and discouraged to, you know, begin a journey of wellness and empowerment? Was it um, Leo Zhu said, the journey of a thousand steps starts with the first step. And then the journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. We're all on a journey in this life, in this body. Everybody's journey is different. We're all unique. Just take baby steps. Um, and I love the saying, even a stumble is a forwards movement. So just really, you know, take baby steps. Don't over overwhelm yourself even more by saying, well, I need to do that and I need to do that and, it, and there's my goal. Just look at what you can do right here, right now, and then take another step. Be patient and kind to yourself. You're doing the best you can with the skills uh, and conditions that you're working with. And only ever look back to see how far you've come forwards. Don't look back and go, oh, I wish and if only. The past is the past and we can't change it. But let's build on it. We've got the skills that we've learned from our past. Just see how far you've come today and, and keep moving forwards. And don't compare your journey to other people. It's easy to go, well, she's a divorced single mum and, and I'm a divorced single mum and she looks to be like, she's got her shit together. And, and I really haven't, you know. No, we're all different. And we can all put on a face mask, if you like, and make it look like we're doing okay. But underneath, we can be so anxious and we can be so terrified and we can have all sorts of issues that we're dealing with that we just don't show the world so everybody's dealing with something don't please don't compare yourself to others just keep looking at where you've come from and where you're going to have your focus on what it is that you want and your path will find its way there don't plan it out too much but keep that focus of where you're heading and just keep coming back to yourself and that, that child within you, put your hands on your heart and just say, I've got you, I love you, you're safe now, it's okay. And just remind the child within you that you're doing okay and, and help that child feel safe and secure within you. Because you're fine, you're doing fine. And just keep reminding yourself you're doing fine. You're here, That's you're beautiful. alive, you open up to another day. The future is within your grasp, but you it's step by step, it's baby steps. That's beautiful. 
It's it's absolutely wonderful. All of the things that you said right now, too, with the comparison and, you know, the baby steps and the loving yourself and the inner child, there is so much there. And I hope you guys are really listening and maybe take notes if you need to take notes, because this is what it's about. It's about giving you the information that we, Sarah and I, and many other healers, many other people who are here sharing their journey, their stories, and being vulnerable to help, because I turned into that. I, I needed that because traditional therapy didn't work for me. And that's just where I was at. And so I had to come up with my own answers through a lot of mistakes, self-discovery, trial and error. And it's like, but it's here. We're making, giving it access, we're giving you access to it. And I'm, I'm just so happy that you have shared so many amazing things. And before, you know, we start wrapping up, Sarah, I just wanted to also point out how when you were saying, don't compare yourself to other people, if you're in that place and you are following accounts that say you're on social media. Don't do that. Don't do not. That is so destructive. And it's it is just going to take you back where you don't want to be. And so if you don't have the you don't have the um, discipline to not follow accounts that will put you in a comparison situation, don't even be on social media. You need to delete it and focus on you. And and what do you think it, about that, Sarah? Social media is quite toxic. And my husband works with software. And he was saying recently, he has read about the dead internet theory, that about 60% of the accounts out there are being run by bots and AI. So the, the people that you might even be following are, couldn't might not even be real they might just be ai generated that that looks like they've got this wonderful fantasy life so just don't believe everything you see on the internet it's you know a lot of it is so fake it's so fake and i love that you said that there's actually one account and i can't remember it is a um a photography account of models there's not one real person there and it looked real this person i met on a trip back from canada was sharing it with me uh, and i her and i were we just were we were floored because they look so real and even if it's real people you don't know what's happening behind closed doors no. No. focus on you yeah. thank you sarah for that that's that's great wow 60 percent. that's quite high yeah Dead internet, yeah. Wow. Um, whew, wow. Okay, so we're going to have some fun right now. What I like to ask all my guests are two questions before we, we close up. And that is, if you were in a time machine and you could go back in time, what is the one thing you would do differently? Do you know, Cheryl, I don't think I'd do anything differently because I look at what I've done and what I didn't like that I've done, you know, we've all made mistakes. But if I hadn't have done what I've done in the past, I wouldn't be where I am now with the understanding I have now. So, so no, I don't think I'd change anything. I could look back and go, oh, yeah, I wouldn't do that. That was just ridiculous. Or, wow, that was so silly to do that. Or that made me look foolish. Or, but actually, I've learned so much from my mistakes um, and through what I've been through. And, and without going through that, I wouldn't have done the healing to get me to where I'm at now. So I really wouldn't change anything. And you wouldn't be able to share your gifts with us because you wouldn't know you had all of these healing, right? These gifts. So that's yeah. that's absolutely beautiful. And if, I mean, not if, let's stay on that time machine and let's go back in time to your younger self. What is the one piece of advice you would tell your younger self? Oh, I think um, everybody's got an opinion and they're all different and they're all going to share their opinion with you in the main. People like to share their opinions. Don't buy into it. Let go of people's opinions. Come back into yourself and do what you want to do because it's what you want to do, not because you want to be liked by people, not because somebody told you to do that. 
do what you want to do and, and live the life you want to live. Don't live vicariously for somebody else. Allow them to have their own problems and don't take them on board to yourself and just be the weird, quirky, unique kid that you were and, and keep hold of that, you know, and, and just don't, don't please people all the time. Let go of the need to be liked and, and, and please people. That's so beautiful, especially because there's so many, you know, there's so many people out there that have lost sight of that, you know, inner child um, playfulness and curiosity and fun. And it's there. It's all the conditioning, all the shit that we've been through, all the programming that has, you know, really, if you allow it, it will definitely make you hard. And that's no way to live this beautiful life. We're here for a reason. And yeah. only the bravest souls have reincarnated here, if you believe in that. So, Sarah, it has been such a gift to have you here today. And I'm so honored for, you know, your time again and for just sharing your bright light. So please let us know what you're working on and where can people find you? What am I working on? Oof, what am I not working on? So, um, <laughs> so I am doing some research for a new book about people's own perceptions and beliefs around empathy. I am working on um, some group coaching packages with my course that I've written. I'm working on uh, speaking on more stages, uh, putting myself out there to share my message to help more people. Um, and people can find me through my website, which is my name, three W's, Sarah with an H, Dawkins.com. Perfect. And everything will be in the show notes. And what about your book? Is that on Amazon? Uh, yes. In Heal Yourself is on Amazon worldwide in English, Spanish, Dutch, and French. And the English version is also available in Barnes and Noble in America. Oh my gosh, how wonderful. I want a signed copy in person though, because we're going to meet. We're absolutely, absolutely. going to meet. I'm putting it out there. Absolutely. Thank you again, Sarah. I appreciate you, you, my friend. I'll talk to you. That's it for this week's episode. I hope you learned some invaluable tips from Sarah, sharing with us the importance of self-love, breathing for even just one minute at a time throughout the day, deep breathing, and also just not comparing yourself to anyone else's journey. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. 